of prayer. What power prayer hath? No human creature can believe, said Luther, how powerful prayer is, and what is it able to effect, but only those that have learned it by experience. It is a great matter when in extreme need, as then one can take hold on prayer. I know as often as I have earnestly prayed that I have been richly heard and have obtained more than I prayed for. Indeed, God sometimes deferred but notwithstanding he came. Ecclesiasticus saith, The prayer of a good and godly Christian availeth more to help than the physician's physic. Oh, how great and upright and godly Christian's prayer is! How powerful with God that a poor human creature should speak with God's high majesty in heaven, and not be affrighted, but on the contrary know that God smileth upon him for Christ's sake his dearly beloved son. The heart and conscience in this act of praying must not fly and recoil backwards by reason of our sins and unworthiness, but must not stand in doubt nor be scared away. We must not do, said Luther, as the Bavarian did, who with great devotion called upon St. Leonard, an idol set up in a church in Bavaria, behind which idol stood one who answered the Bavarian and said, Fie on thee, Bavarian! And in that sort oftentimes was repulsed and could not be heard. At last the Bavarian went away and said, Fie on thee, Leonard! But when we pray, we must not let it come to fie upon thee, but must certainly hold, conclude, and believe that we are already heard in that for which we pray with faith in Christ. Therefore the ancients finally described prayer, namely that it is a sensus mentis adun, a climbing up of the heart unto God, that is, lifteth itself up, crieth and sigheth to God. Neither I myself, said Luther, nor any other that I know, have rightly understood the definition of this ascensus. Indeed, we have boasted and talked much of the climbing up of the heart, but we failed in syntaxi. We could not bring thereunto the word doom. Nay, we flew from God. We were afraid to draw near unto him and to pray through Christ, in whom the strength of prayer wholly consisteth. We always prayed in popedom, conditionally, and therefore uncertainly. But let us pray in heart, and also with our lips, for prayer by our loving God supporteth the world. Otherwise, without prayer, it would stand in a far more lamentable state. Of the Power of Prayer and of the Lord's Prayer Our Saviour Christ, said Luther, most excellently, and with very few words comprehended in the Lord's Prayer, all things both needful and necessary, but without trouble, trials, and vexations, prayer cannot rightly be made. Therefore God saith, Call on me in the time of trouble, etc. Without trouble it is only a cold prattling, and goeth not from the heart. The common saying is, Need teacheth to pray. And although the papists say that God well understandeth all the words of those that pray, yet St. Bernard is far of another opinion, where he saith, God heareth not the words of one that prayeth, unless he that prayeth heareth them first himself. The Pope is a mere tormentor of the conscience. The assembly of his greased and religious crew in praying was altogether like the croaking of frogs, which edified nothing at all. It was mere sophistry, and deceiving, fruitless, and unprofitable. Prayer is a strong wall and a fort of the church. It is a godly Christian's weapon which no man knoweth nor findeth, but only he who hath the spirit of grace and of prayer. The first three petitions of our Lord's Prayer do comprehend such great and celestial things that no heart is able to search them out. The fourth petition contains the whole policy and economy, or the temporal and house government, 
and all things necessary for this life. The fifth prayer striveth and fighteth against our own evil consciences, against original and actual sins, which trouble the same, etc. Truly they were penned by wisdom itself. None but God could have done the like. We cannot pray without faith in Christ the Mediator. The Turks, the Jews, and the ungodly may rehearse and speak the words of prayer after one, but they cannot pray. And although the apostles were taught this prayer by Christ, and prayed often, yet they prayed not as they should have prayed. For Christ saith, Hitherto ye have not prayed in my name. Whereas doubtless they had prayed much, and spoken the words. But when the Holy Ghost came, then they prayed aright in the name of Christ. If praying and reading a prayer be but only a bare work, as the papists hold it to be, then the righteousness of the law is nothing worth. The upright prayer of a godly Christian is a strong hedge, as God himself said. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge, and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none, etc. Therefore said Luther, when others do blaspheme, let us pray. David saith, he doth the will of them that fear him, and heareth their prayers. We must daily go on praying. I, said Luther, have every day enough to do to pray. And when I lay me down to rest, I pray the Lord's Prayer, and afterwards take hold on two or three sentences out of the Bible, and so betake myself to sleep, then I am well satisfied. The preachers ought to join their prayers together. Dr. E. Pinus, superintendent of Hambro, coming to Wittenberg to speak with Luther, who after his dispatch and at his taking leave said, I commend myself and our church at Hambro to your prayers. Luther answered him and said, Loving A. Pine, the cause is not ours, but God's. Let us join our prayers together, as then the cause will be holpen. I will pray against the Pope and the Turks as long as I live, and I like it well that you take such course at Hambro, earnestly to pray against Mohammed and the Pope. Of the Power of Prayer God always giveth more than we pray for. When we truly pray for a piece of bread, so God giveth a whole acre of land. When my wife, said Luther, was sick, I prayed to God that she might live, so he not only granted that request, but also therewith he hath given us a godly farm at Zoldor, and hath blessed us with a fruitful year. At that time my wife said unto me, Sir, how is it that in Popedom they pray so often with great vehemence, but we are very cold and careless in praying? I answered her, The devil driveth on his servants continually. They are diligent and take great pains in their false worshipping, but we indeed are ice cold therein and negligent. Of Luther's Prayer for Gracious Rain In the year 1532 throughout all Germany was a great drought. The corn in the fields in a lamentable way began to wither. On the ninth of June the same year, Luther called together the whole assembly into the church and directed his prayer with deep sighs to God in the manner following. O Lord, behold our prayers for thy promise sake. We have prayed, and our hearts have sighed, but the covetousness of the rich farmers doth hinder and him in thy blessing. For seeing that through thy gospel they are unbridled, they think it free for them to live and do what they please. They now fear neither death nor hell, but say, I believe, therefore I shall be saved. They become haughty, spiteful mammonists, and accursed covetous cutthroats that suck out land and people. Moreover, also the usurers among the gentry in every place deal wickedly, insomuch as it seemeth thou, O God, wilt now visit us together with them with the rod." Yet nevertheless thou hast still means whereby to maintain those that are thine, 
although thou sufferest no rain to fall among the ungodly. After he had said thus, he lifted up his eyes towards heaven and said, Lord God, thou hast through the mouth of thy servant David said, The Lord is nigh unto all that call upon him faithfully. He doth the will of those that fear him, and heareth their prayers, and helpeth them in their distress. How is it, Lord, that thou givest no rain, seeing we have cried and prayed so long unto thee? Thy will be done, O Lord. We know that although thou givest not rain, yet notwithstanding thou wilt give us something greater. Thou wilt give us something better, a still, a quiet, and peaceable life. Now we pray, O Lord, from the bottom of our hearts. If thou, O Lord, wilt not be pleased to hear and give us rain, then the ungodly will say, Christ thy only Son is a liar. For he saith, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye pray the Father in my name, the same he will give unto you, etc. Insomuch that they will give thy Son the lie. I know, O Lord, that we do cry unto thee from our hearts, with yearning and sighing. Why then dost thou not hear us? Now, even the same day, and within the space of half an hour after the people went from church, it began to rain so sweet and mildly, which continued for a whole fortnight, so that the grounds thereby were changed and refreshed in a most miraculous manner. This happened June 9, 1532. A Papistical Prayer The praying in popedom is a mere tormenting of the consciences. It is only a prating and tongue threshing, no praying but a work of obedience. From thence proceeded a confused sea full of Horus Canonicus, the howling and babbling in cells and monasteries, where they read and sang the psalms and collects without all spiritual devotion, insomuch that they neither understood the words, sentences, nor the meaning. In what manner, and how I tormented myself, said Luther, with those Horus Canonicus before the gospel came, which by reason of many businesses I often intermitted, I am not able to express. On the Saturdays I used to lock myself up in my cell and accomplish what the whole week I had neglected. But at last I was troubled with so many affairs that I was fain oftentimes to omit also my Saturday's devotion. At length, when I saw that Amsdorf and others derided such manner of devotion, then I quite left it off. It was a great torment from which we are now delivered by the gospel. Although, said Luther, I had done no more but only freed people from that torment, yet they might well give me thanks for it. Innumerable laws and works were taught and imposed upon people without the spirit, as in the book Rational Divinorum, many abominable things are written. To pray for peace. Luther, receiving a letter written unto him from the Imperial Assembly by Philip Melanchthon, after the reading of it, he said, What Philip Melanchthon writeth hath hands and feet, hath authority and gravity. It is of weight, contained in a few words, as always I have found by his letters. But I perceive we must have wars, for the papists would willingly go on, but they want a good stomach, neither may we endure the case to stand upon these terms. Let it therefore proceed in nomine domini. I will commit all things to God. I will be Crito in the play. I will pray that God would convert our adversaries. We have a good cause on our side. Who would not fight and venture body and blood pro sacris for the holodom, which is God's word? And besides, the temporal laws and statutes of policy do also concur and agree with our proceedings. For we always have desired and called for peace. But our princes are provoked and drawn to defend themselves and their subjects, and of necessity must resist their power. Our adversaries will not suffer us to live in peace. This letter, said Luther, was written ten days since. By this time, 
it is concluded what shall be done the everlasting merciful god give his grace thereunto let us watch and pray for satan sleepeth not of temporal peace worldly and outward peace is one of the highest gifts of god but we abuse it too much every one liveth after his own will and pleasure against god and the magistrate oh how soundly will our gentry and farmers in germany pay for this before one hundred and fifty years come to an end as already they have done in hungary and in austria but afterwards god will restore them again and beat down popedom let us not cease to pray of unity and concord through concord small things and wealth do increase as the heathen said but dissension is dangerous and hurtful especially in schools in professions high arts and in the professors thereof wherein the one ought to reach the hand to the other should kiss and embrace each other but when we bite and devour one another then let us take heed lest we be swallowed up together therefore let us pray and strive for the word of faith and the prayers of the just are the most powerful weapons moreover god himself sendeth his holy angels round about them that fear him we ought valiantly to fight for we are under a lord of hosts and a prince of war therefore with one hand we must build and in the other hand take the sword that is we must both teach and resist it is now time to watch for we are the mark they shoot at our adversaries intend to make a confederacy with the turk they aim at us we must venture it for antichrist will war and get the victory against the saints of god as daniel saith we said luther stand outwardly in the greatest danger by reason of treachery and treason the papists endeavor with money to grease and corrupt our captains and officers an ass laden with money may do anything as cornelius tacitus writeth of us germans we have taught them to take money there is neither fidelity nor truth on earth of the power of prayer the prayer of the heart said luther and the sighs of the poor and oppressed do make such an alarm and cry in heaven that god and all the angels must hear the same o oh, our lord god hath a sharp listening ear of the sign of the heart when moses with the children of israel came to the red sea then he cried with trembling and quaking yet he opened not his mouth neither was his voice heard on the earth by the people doubtless said luther he cried and sighed in his heart and said ah oh lord god what course shall i now take which way shall i now turn myself how am i come to this strait nor help nor counsel can save us before us is the sea behind us are our enemies the egyptians on both sides high and huge mountains i am the cause that all this people shall now be destroyed etc then answered god and said wherefore criest thou unto me as if god should say what alarm a shrieking and a loud crying dost thou make that the whole heavens must ring therewith etc but alas said luther we read such examples as dead letters human reason is not able to search this passage out the way through the red sea is full as broad and wider far if not further than wittenberg lieth from coburg that is thirty dutch miles one hundred twenty english at least doubtless the people were constrained in the night season to rest to bait and eat therein for six hundred thousand men besides women and children would require a good time to pass through although they went one hundred and fifty in rank and file god's hearing prayer it is impossible that god should not hear the prayers which with faith are made in christ although god giveth not according to the measure manner and time which we dictate unto him he will not be tied 
in such sort dealt god with the mother of saint austin she prayed to god that her son austin might be converted but as yet it would not be then she ran to the learned entreating them to persuade and advise him thereunto at last she propounded unto him a marriage with a christian virgin that thereby he might be drawn back and brought to the christian faith but all would not do as yet but when our lord god came thereto he came to purpose and made of him such an austin that he became a great light to the church st james saith pray one for another for the prayer of the righteous availeth much etc prayer said luther is a powerful thing for god hath bound and tied himself thereunto christ taught the lord's prayer according to the manner of the jews that is he directed it only to the father whereas they that pray in the same manner are heard for the son's sake this was done because christ would not be praised before his death of the power of prayer as the king of persia said luther laid siege to the city of nasili the bishop that was therein saw that he was too weak by man's help to defend the city against so mighty a king wherefore he went upon the wall lifted up his hands to heaven and prayed in the sight of his enemies whereupon immediately the eyes of the horses and the whole army in such sort were pestered with an innumerable multitude of flies stinging them that with their riders they ran away and so raised the siege whereby the city was preserved in such a manner could god divert the wicked enterprises of the papists against us if we would diligently pray that a true christian prayeth always the prayers of an upright christian are without ceasing though they pray not always with their mouth yet their hearts do pray continually sleeping and waking for the sigh of a true christian is prayer as a psalm saith because of the deep sighing of the poor i will up saith the lord etc in like manner a true christian always carrieth the cross though he feeleth it not always of the strength of the lord's prayer the lord's prayer said luther bindeth the people together and knitteth them one to another insomuch that one prayeth for another and together one with another and it is so strong and powerful that it even driveth away the fear of death. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Larry Wilson. Selections from the Table Talk of Martin Luther by Martin Luther.